10 months ago, I shared this video. Why didn't I enjoy Old World? In that video, I shared my, as you can tell, frustrations with Old World as a game. It had just released as an Epic Games exclusive, and it was a combination of Civilization and Crusader Kings. Take the Civilization 4X style, the map, and then add in this beautiful layer of characters and development of real stories and events. And it was a good game. And it's important to note just before I begin that those kinds of videos are usually not produced in isolation. That one leads to the full review, and most of them do. These are more discussion pieces to accompany a broader review. However, in this video, I wanted to say that I was wrong. There were four points that I argued in that video, and I think that very few of them still stand today, largely thanks to the way that I've changed in my experiences with Old World, and of course, its development since then. It has since now just recently released on Steam, and I think between 10 months ago and now it's received something like 68 developer diaries and 80-some game updates, those patch updates, and they're really intricate and they're really detailed and very impressive. So then, Old World, how was I wrong? Firstly, I'll start with the easy one. An epic exclusive. It's no longer an epic exclusive. Done. Although I would mention a couple of caveats and clarity points, there's nothing inherently wrong with being an epic exclusive. And my understanding is that it enabled Mohawk Games or perhaps their publisher or something uh, to get the game to market easier, cheaper, more readily, something like that. Again, light on the details, but it's important to note that there are lots of considerations going on in the background. As a consumer, Epic Games is good for competition. As a consumer, I like all platforms. It's really all the substance there is to that point. Thankfully now, with competition among platforms, Epic, Steam, GOG, we have uh, Old World released on all of them. So even if it was an issue to some players who didn't have Epic or didn't want to use Epic, it no longer is. And that makes me very happy indeed. The second call, and perhaps uh, a little more controversial, but certainly more personal, uh, was the graphics and the UI of Old World, the two somewhat going hand in hand. The graphics, I argued, out of date and misplaced. If I'm looking at a 4X game for a really long time, I would prefer it to be as beautiful as it can be. Of course, not crisis level of beautiful. We don't need to be running our GTX 3090s to play a game like this. Uh, in fact, my dream scenario, as I mentioned in that video, for all 4X games is uh, actually texture packs. Civilization VI did this well, although slightly unofficially through a back end. It was a mod that was developed, I think, by one of the developers, though, so it did have that official link. Anyway, it provided Civilization VI with a Civ V texture pack which I thought was really cool. <laughs> that way you can have the more gritty, real style of Civilization V, and dare I say, Old World as well, or the more flavorful, some might argue cartoony style of Civilization VI. You could have them both in one. And I think I'd still kind of like to see that for Old World, a sort of a, a skin inspired by either Civ VI or Humankind. But honestly, at the end of the day, it isn't a big deal, and it shouldn't take away from the quality of Old World and the quality of Old World's experience. And in many cases, after spending many, many hours with Old World, I found that it sort of falls into the background, especially with all of these uh, events, considerations, characters, developments. Uh, the world itself is slightly less important because you're often dealing with other interfaces in Old World. Uh, but that aside, the UI was also somewhat of a tripping point for me. UI, user interface, how we interact with the game, tool tips, uh, uh, overlays that the worker had there to see the different yields on the tiles, uh, game suggestions, like it's telling me to build the hanging gardens or a mine here. Th these little things, they all add up to the user experience. The user interface plays an incredibly important role in that. And while Old Worlds wasn't bad, if I was talking about my frustrations, that was one of them. I think that Old World was and is still slightly, because of how ambitious it is, still slightly cumbersome 
in just the amount of detail you have on offer. However, I would caveat that by saying that that's not necessarily a bad thing. Old World is a different experience, right? If I, if I wanted a game with no UI, I'd get out my phone and play Angry Birds or Doodle Jump or... I, I, to be honest, I'm really out of date on that. What are, you, what are the kids playing? Candy Crush? Let me know. Let me know. Either way, <laughs> if I wanted a simple user interface experience, I should probably play a game like that. And if I was looking for a complex game, I should choose Old World's interface instead, and I'd absolutely agree. I also think that Old World's experience over the last 10 months, as I mentioned at the start of the video, a lot of tender love and care has gone into Old World, not just in its UI, but in its events, in unit balancing, in images, in every single thing, really, that you could think about the game. It has seen love, it has seen attention, and I gotta say, it's been pretty damn well received. Not without a few rough edges, but by and large, uh, those concerns no longer concerns for me. And perhaps the first one never should have been. Again, personal preference. I'll leave it at that. The third point that I argued was in-game restrictions. I found that there were restrictions in the game that made it feel uh, not open enough, not flexible enough. Unlike 4X experiences that I loved and enjoyed at the time, particularly, of course, Civilization V was a big one for me then. And the key thing that I drew on, I drew on a few, but the key one was the city sites mechanic. You've already seen it in this video, but if you're unfamiliar, you can't settle wherever you like. There are uh, predetermined locations on the map where you have to settle your cities. It's one example. The idea, by the way, uh, and design philosophy behind this, uh, I, I was told, by Mohawk Games themselves, which was wicked uh, to have them on our, our Old World stream the other day. Uh, the idea behind it is that it enables better balance. And I get that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, if you can restrict, say, the limit between cities or the maximum extent between cities and then have that really rigidly in place, i.e. there must be seven tiles between every city, every city must be connected to fresh water or most of them. Uh, it definitely enables both fairness across players, across spawns, uh, but it also ensures that, say, units that could potentially be too powerful at very, very, very close range can be used in Old World's game. They don't have to design around every eventuality because the overall number of eventualities is drastically reduced. Uh, personally, I still find that that reduces my flexibility uh, because it does. Can't really, can't really argue around that. But at the same time, everything that I just argued also makes sense. This is probably, I think, best put down to the uniqueness of Old World. And it can absolutely be a frustration for you. If you're frustrated with it, you're allowed to be. But equally, and perhaps maybe more importantly, going in with a really open mind, I think is really important. Old World isn't just a merge of Civ and Crusader Kings. When you merge those two things together, you don't end up with just a merge. You really have to shift your focus and your mindset, at least a little more than you might moving between Civ games or heck, even from humankind to Civ or something like that. This is a much larger step and it should be treated with respect, uh, the respect that it deserves because it absolutely is a larger step. Again, it can absolutely be one that's frustrating to you, but it's important to acknowledge that we're dealing with a different ball game here, a completely different level of play. The last thing that I brought up was, uh, or can essentially be boiled down to, loads of events and other uh, in-game interfaces like court members or characters, those kind of things, lead to a lot of text walls. And a lot of text walls leads to decision fatigue. Combine that, or at least place all of that interface, those, those decisions, 
uh, those characters, those in in fighting relationships, place all of that on top of a game of Civ, and holy moly, you've got yourself a case I found of decision fatigue. Uh, by a few hours in, I felt a little more drained by Old World than I would really playing any other game. I put it down to, like I say, decision fatigue. There's too much, too much information to process, too much to read. I argued initially that perhaps the events could be interfaced in different ways. Maybe the UI tooltip when you hover over the options is really stripped down, or at least we have an ability to really strip it down to the base level, like plus one money, minus one training. Literally just that bare bones impact could be a way to reduce decision fatigue and enable a more flexible or fast play style for a game of old world. And I think potentially those points are actually still valid. And I do still find a bit of decision fatigue in Old World. Not that it's a more exhausting title, but I think the better way to put it is that it's a much more involved title. Uh, some of the discussion on stream the other day when I was playing Old World when the uh, Heroes of the Aegean uh, DLC came out, shout out to the Hittites, by the way. Uh, a lot of the discussion in uh, the live stream chat talked about just that. Uh, we had some great conversations about how. Old World is a game where you could spend a really long time on a turn, and it kind of suits the design philosophy of the game as well. Each turn is a year. Your character grows older. You are but a mortal, of course. And in the Old World, spoiler alert, mortals didn't live for as long on average. Nowhere near. Although, of course, uh, being a, a king or, or queen or whatever you are, you'll probably live longer than the average peasant. That being said, I think this speaks more broadly to what makes Old World great. Old World is a blend of Civ and Crusader Kings, but that's putting it far too lightly and far too simplistically. It takes what those two things do well, or at least some of what they do well, and merges them together. Politics, intrigue, characters from CK3, and a 4X map, and cities, and development, and technology, but more nuanced laws and other things. Orders. This wonderful command system in Old World, right? It's too simple. And unfortunately, sometimes titles can only handle simple things. You're limited to 100 characters and realistically probably 50 or 60, otherwise you're writing an essay. But really, an Old World title for a review should say something like, a merger of civilization, but next level. Huh? An emerger of CK3, but really just stripping out the politics, stripping out the characters, and again, just taking it to that little next level. Old World brings that wonderful order system that I've mentioned. It brings training to troops, adding generals. This is something we don't have in a civilization game, for example. You take the characters, the development, the stories, the events from CK3, and you end up with an experience that is more careful. And that is different, and that is okay. Old World is an enjoyable experience, and I'd recommend you check it out if you can. It may not necessarily be for everyone, and some of my frustrations might still hold true, and they might still hold true to you. But I've got to say, Old World is a very fun 4X historical strategy game. It always has been, and with the Heroes of the Aegean DLC, eight sieves in the game, I think it's more fun now than ever before. Scout's counter-attack, noob.